Time was being led by Mies van der Rohe. Oh, really? famous modern dude. Okay? Wow, yeah, that's, right. So that's I did, cool. Yeah, I was I was jumping right because yeah. fortunately Wisconsin did not have a school of architecture right. because of course you had Franklin Wright in, in the uh -huh. zip code and he had Taliesin and all this and they had never bothered to look back. So there was no school of architecture wow. in Wisconsin at all. Not a, okay. Yeah. And so, but I got accepted there. That my I passed my SATs, which I hadn't had to take before. I got there. My parents were stable. That was that was cool. You know, mm -hmm. and, yeah. And then you get back home, and to my good fortune, my asthma uh, record of asthma in life, uh, the draft board was on the fifth floor because I wasn't home but a couple days, and I got a draft call for mm -hmm. Vietnam. But I ran up the back steps of the draft board, breathing mm -hmm. heavy, and I walked out of there with what was called a 1Y deferment, not a 4F, but a 1Y, mm -hmm. that if we really need you, we'll ask you and figure out something to do with you. But anyways, um, I failed at draft board. Hmm. Uh, I had this friend, uh, Candy Terry, uh, from school and from, from church at the time, and so she invited me over to her parents' house for welcome home. So I had this dinner. At the end of it, uh, her father, uh, uh, Thomas Terry, looked at me and said, uh, you know, Will, what, what are you going to do? What do you do tomorrow? I'm going to take the yellow page and I'm going to get a job with an architect, because I got, you know, that was March. Hmm. And so it was excellent because my schooling wasn't the normal semester, so I came back early, hmm. okay? And so I, I said, I said, you said, know anybody? No, I just got yellow pages. I said, well, there's this guy. I, I, I'm a scoutmaster. He's a scoutmaster. He's an architect. I hear he's, he seems like a really nice man. I hear he's pretty good. So here's, here's a name, right? And so the next morning, I didn't even bother calling the guy. And it was interesting because here's, here's the lake and here's downtown Milwaukee. Here is where we lived here. And I had to go west where I never would have gone with the yellow pages probably, right? Mm -hmm. And it was Wensler. So that would have been at the end of maybe if I was doing the alphabetical thing, because yeah. I was just going to go for it, right? So I had one of those cars, maybe that one, under one arm, and I had a little sketchbook, and I'm sitting on the stoop in this little woods in this rural small community above the railroad tracks when he arrives for work. It's in the bottom of a little condo project, right? Mm -hmm. And he just rents a little space here, and it's five guys. His name was William Wensler. And he was a graduate with honors from the University of Illinois in architectural engineering, not just architecture. Mm -hmm. And these five guys, he had a structural engineer on staff, which was one of his school buddies. He had these three support guys that were really as good as could be, and he was doing the finest, finest work in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was phenomenal. Concrete shells, churches, schools, houses. It was just over the moon lucky. And so... Unannounced, I'm sitting on the stoop. He walks up. I'm Mr. Weather, hey, I'm, 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 Mr. Terry sent me, right? And so I went in, had a little conversation, and in about 15 minutes, I had a job. Wow. And he said, well, you can come back tomorrow, or if you want, you can start right now. So I took off my coat, rolled up my sleeves, and uh, got my board assignment, and uh, nice. was starting to make models, and it was really, really exceptional work. And that summer, it was the full gamut of making, I never drunk. I don't like the taste of coffee. It's nothing, anything other, I've never liked it. Really? And yet I had the assignment of making coffee for these guys. For, for whatever, <laughs> for, for, three, for three years I worked there, right? And first thing I had to do is make the coffee in the morning, right? Yeah. And they never commented, I don't know if it was good coffee, bad coffee, you know, yeah. who knows what it was, but I, I made the coffee, right? I did the blueprints, I, but I got to build models, I got to do drawings. Mm -hmm. And two of the folks in the studio, Michael Johnson and Neil Krieger, were young men that were in their early 20s, they were very talented, and they were building their own houses. Mm. So they would always recruit me, do you want to come home tonight? You can, I've got a project to draw on, or do you want to help me nail soffit boards, right? And so my parents didn't know why I took an overnight bag every time I left for work in the morning, you know, so I'd go on a couple days at times, and then show back up and, you know, get a fresh set of clothes and underwear and, uh -huh. and go, go out again, yeah. right? But, you know, uh, I got pretty good energy, and I always have had, and I'm um, curious, and uh, this sort of Midwestern work ethic or whatever, and so it was a great, great, amazing experience. Mm -hmm. But needless to say, with that under my belt for, that was in March, I'm going down to Chicago to start at IIT in, in uh, late August, early September, 
as you'd expect. But I had already decided by July that I was bagging that. Wrong. Yeah. I've got this job. This is killer. It's a great experience. How could you ever get anything better? I'm doing these tra- tours, road trips, discovering Frank Lloyd Wright, seriously discovering him. Yeah. And these guys were real, really a good influence on me. And so with no school of architecture in Wisconsin, I figured, well, I can always get a master's, I can always transfer whatever, but I'm gonna put my own program together. So I worked full time for those four years. I then proceeded to take, my, my only degree in life is a BFA in sculpture mm-hmm. from University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee, which is not Madison, but Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. So I'd live at home, I'd go to classes, I'd work 40 hours a week, and I'd repeat, okay? Mm-hmm. And so that was really exceptional, right? Yeah. And so I took structural engineering courses, I took philosophy, I took history of art and history of architecture. Mm-hmm. I took lots of classes in arts, and then my second teacher by name was Fred Berman. So we had missed him here. I never knew her first name. Uh, that's strange. Man, she was missed him. Right? She was your <laughs> fifth grade teacher, right? She didn't have a first name. Why would you have a first name? I know, right? yeah. yeah. But by the time you're in college, right, this was my basic design teacher. His name was Fred Berman. And he was a student of Bauhaus. Mm. And he was uh, not of the Bauhaus, but of Black Mountain, where the people that came from Bauhaus, like Joseph Albers. Uh-huh. So here I am, cool. a freshman in college, and I'm learning all the basic design principles of the Bauhaus, not knowing what it was. Yeah. Great thinking projects, discovery projects, uh, found object projects, all these things about the basics, proportion, scale, materiality, mm-hmm. you know, all kinds of creative things, and ending up with full on Joseph Albert's color theory, which he did uh, all of his famous work in. Yeah. Amazing. So yeah, really I had nice. Berman for two semesters. I got to go say thank you about uh, two or three years before he died, about uh, 10, 12 years ago. He was shocked that I would seek him out, and because mm. you know, he had heard rumors, because I've always, you in lectures and things, I, his name pops up, right? Uh, yeah. Because these are the people that make us, you know? Exactly. And uh, that's really, so that basic thing. So I was very lucky, actually, that I had this sort of hands-on. And then I got, continue to get luckier. So how did I get to the desert from Wisconsin? Okay, mm. well, Wright got here, but not unlike that, somebody that came to work for Wright was a man named Paulo Solari. Mm. And so Neil Krieger, who was with Wensler, his parents published Arizona Highways magazine. Mm. They were the publishers. Krieger Lithography published that magazine. So he had reason to come to Arizona occasionally, yeah. right? And then Michael was sort of the bad boy gadabout that was the right guy, and he was really a pretty intense character, a character with a capital C, mm-hmm. and good influence. And so anyways, there was going to be a bridge built across the harbor in Milwaukee. Mm. And so Michael knew, knew that Paulo Solari's hobby, avocation, if you will, he liked bridges. And so he did all these great bridge designs. So he just, on a lark, invited him to lecture at the art museum and told him the story about the bridge being considered. And so Paulo arrived with these long scroll drawings, 50, 60 feet long, or maybe 30 feet. They were big, they rolled yeah. down on the floor of the museum. And he had done three schemes for a bridge along with his lecture. Wow. And I got pretty excited about Paulo Solari, the visionary work on these ideas of cities and ecology and talking about solar and all this stuff way before it was a popular thing. Mm. And so in the summer of 67, he ran a summer workshop at his studio. Have you been to Paulo's studio at Cosanti? I know, I've been dying That's, that's to on go. your list, okay? Oh, that's yes. a must, must do. Uh-huh. Yeah, Because the studio here, it's old, it's tattered, yeah. it's been there for almost 60 years now. Uh-huh. And it's sort of sad, but it's in, in Paris Valley, so it's easy for you to get to. Yeah. And I arrived on a summer's day uh, on an airplane and uh, took a bus actually out to the corner of Scottsdale Road in Camelback. Mm-hmm. Stayed at a little, what was then called a, a summer resort, a winter resort. They closed in the summer, so he got cheap board because they didn't have air conditioning, just said that. Yeah. And a couple guys had cars, so we'd drive up. And I was a summer student of Paulo Solari's, and my only two credits in architecture officially is for that silk file workshop with Paulo Solari. Wow. But it just, again, to be with a genius, yeah. he was in his early 40s, mm-hmm. he was just, he'd been climbing his mountain forever, he came out of Italy, worked for, with Wright for about two and a half, three years, wow. went and started his own thing, did a thing called the Domed House, which you should look up, mm-hmm. it's amazing, the little domed house he built in Cave Creek with uh-huh. a, a colleague named Mark Mills, uh, that was pretty special and really inventive, it was exhibit, it, the model of that house is in the Museum of Modern Art, has been for a while, uh-huh. quite a while, but it was interesting wow. because he 
this lady arrived on Model A Ford, he and Mark Mills had camped on the side of Camelback Mountain. Mm. And it was late summer, and this lady drove up in a Model A Ford, and she just bought land up in uh, Cave Creek. Mm. And at that point, it was probably a four-hour drive from Camelback Mountain. No roads, dirt up to there. That's where the gold mines were and stuff, but there was just these people, right? And uh, she hired them to do this house. She was from Pittsburgh. Mm. She was quite connected society-wise and all this stuff, but she was quite outrageous and a cool person. Yeah. And so the three of them set up tents on the property and designed this teeny little house of about maybe 900,000 square feet that would become iconic and legendary, okay? And they started building the house. They gathered the rock up so it was similar to what you get at Taliesin mm -hmm. and the desert masonry sort of construction. There was this idea of a dome that would open. It was gonna be a winter house, so you'd open, close it at night and you'd open it in the daytime and capture the sun and there was a sculpted floor in it and all this stuff. And so they start building the house, the three of them, the, uh, Mrs. Mrs. Woods and Mark and, and Paulo. And lo and behold, at spring break, who arrives but the debutante daughter. Mm. Okay, and suddenly uh, Kali is, is working on the house. And so when the house was finished, uh, Mark Mills got the tools, uh, Granny got the house, and Paulo got the wife. Uh, and so he and Kali yeah. <laughs> became married shortly after. He went back to Italy for a while, and then uh -huh. he returned here and started his uh, endeavor. And he's a visionary. He yeah. was not about, he concerned, concerned about mankind and the universe, mm -hmm. the capital A, a reasonable person, but singularly focused as a genius that was not, he could yeah. lecture, he could do it right, he could do it. He's probably the most famous architect uh, from Arizona other than Frank Lloyd Wright. Uh -huh. I mean, he was just, and sadly did not build very much. Mm -hmm. So I had this great summer experience and uh, listening and hearing. And then I went back uh, after that experience, I went back, I had still had a year and a half of school to finish. Mm -hmm. uh, and But I decided that uh, I was uh, falling in love with a, a painter in the, the art program and we got married in uh, January 8th and we drove right uh, from the service in Frank Lloyd Wright's uh, Unitarian Church in Madison. We drove mm -hmm. straight to the desert basically for uh, eight months stint as an as a apprentice to Paulus Lark. Wow.